Hello again, and welcome to another REPL speedrun. Today, we'll be tackling the first challenges in Unit 8, which concerns 2D lists, and we'll be hopefully getting from 8.1 to 8.4. If you're not so familiar with lists, maybe watch my one of my previous speedruns where we go over Unit 7, which covers a lot of challenges with lists. And so from here, I'll expect you to have a good understanding of how a list works, operates, and what you can do with it. Right. So our first, what first, what is a 2D list? So to the best explanation, we have to, for, we have to go back to what a list is. So th this is, uh, imagine a list. So this is your index, and this is the value in the list. So say we have a list that looks like something like A5, B2, 6. Then at our index 0, we have the value A. So if we go L, L0, we get back A. And then at the index 1, we get 5. At the index 2, we get B2, and at the index 3, we get 6. So this is a 1D list. So what does a 2D list look like? A 2D list looks something more like a checkerboard. So if you imagine each index in our main list comprises of an index in a smaller list. So say we have, these are our indexes in the main list. In each index, we'll have a smaller list where we can access different components of that list too. So say 0, 1, 2. If you remember the, I, I believe it was 8 queens, we already tackled some parts of this 2D list, but say um, this is our list here, list. And we have our first index going right and our second index going down. And you use both the right and down index to get an element in the list. So let's say this element is A, this element is B, and this element is C. So what do we have to do to get this element A? Well, we have to go, um, we, ha we have to put list and note the first index is zero and the second index is also zero. So by using list zero, zero, we'll get A. If we want to get B, then we have to go list and note the first index is two, two, and the second index is one. So list two, one gets this value B. Note that the order you put these numbers in is important. First of all, because it matters which way you're going. So you always want to do input the first, the index for the first list first, and then put in the index for the second list. And also because you might run into range errors. So you have to remember that just getting, say, um, we try and get list two. This will return another list in the 2D list. It will return whatever is in the index two. It's getting a bit messy, so let's move back to REPL and I'll show you what I mean. So let's just create um, a, a, 2D, a 2D list. So this is the basic syntax for inputting a 2D list. It, as you can see, it creates a list for the input, and it does this for the number of rows. So let's just say our number of rows is two. Let's keep it simple. And we'll just print L back. So if we run this code, say we can put two, one, three, two, and it returns a 2D list with two, one, and three, two. So in, um, oops. So this here 
looks like this. You have our 0 and our 1, and they both return lists with 0, 1. And we have in our first list, this one over here, with an index of 0 in the main list, we have the numbers 2 and 1. And in our second list over here, we have the indexes of 3 and 2. So if we want to get this 2 over here, we put 0, 0. If we want to get this 1 over here, we put 0, 1. If we want to get this 3 over here, we put 1, 0. And if we want to get this 2, the other 2 over here, we put 1, 1, accessing its position in the 2D list. So let's just check that. Let's just try and get this 3 over here, which we know should be accessed using the coordinates of 1 and 0, since it is the zero, the element with the 0th index in the list with the first index. And this should output 3 if we input the exact, oops, if we input the exact same numbers again. Now notice that the lists, the smaller lists, don't always have to be the same size. So we can put something like, uh, say our first input's 2, and then our next input is 1, 3, 4. Our first list only has a length of 1, and our second list has a length of 3. And so this can cause problems sometimes if we're not careful and we need to check the length of the inputs. So let's try and solve a problem with some 2D lists first. So what's our first problem? Given two integers, the number of rows m and number of columns of this 2D list, uh, and followed by one integer, multiply every element by c and print the result. Okay, so first we want to input our all of this input into a 2D list. But before that, we need to know how many uh, rows are there, because the, um, we need to just know that in advance, really. So Say we can have our parameters, which are these two numbers here, which tell us the number of rows and the number of columns, is equal to input dot split for uh sorry should be int i for i in input dot split, which gets these two numbers. Now we want to input our new 2D list, which we'll actually call um, 2D list. Notice you can actually have numbers and variable names as long as they're not like standalone numbers. Like if this was 2, it would error out. So make sure that it's followed by something else. And the number of rows is the first variable in our parameters list. So we can get that by saying for i in range parameters, zero and the columns variable we don't actually need because it will automatically read it by the amount of spaces and we can assume that because it's an mxn 2d list it means that all of the rows have the same amount of columns and finally let's just print this 2d list just to make sure we're doing okay so if we run this code um oops looks like i've pasted it in the wrong location uh, 2D list. Okay, actually, maybe don't start your um, variable names or numbers. Maybe that's not such a good idea. Print list 2D. And if we input this, as you can see, it creates our 2D list. And now we want to just loop over this list and multiply every element by this final number, which we'll call the multiplier. And we'll just grab that as the input, as the last input. So how do we loop over a 2D list? We want to use um, a, a for loop. And we actually, sorry, we, want, we actually want to use two for loops, one to loop over each row and one to loop over each element in that row. So we can say for row in list2d, which um, let's just print the row. So this will print, 
This will print every individual row. And from there, we can loop over these smaller rows, so these 1D lists, and multiply each element. So next, we can go for element in row. And finally, we can, um, yeah, we can go element times equals multiplier. This times equals is shorthand for equals element times multiplier, so we can use times equals. And finally, we want to print the original 2D list. So let's run this code and see if it works. And now there's a problem. And <clears throat> I actually expected this problem. The problem is these variables in the for loops are actually placeholder variables. So when we get this element, we're actually just getting a copy of the numbers here and we can change the element however we want, but it will not change the original element, and we want to change the original element. So to do that, we want to get the indexes. So in this case, we want to get row in range length of list 2D, or actually just range parameters 0. And then for column in and now we can have range parameters 1. I guess this is where it comes in handy. So this loops over the, all of the rows, and this loops over all the columns. And now we want to access the element in this row position, in the, this row index, in this column index, in the original 2D list. So list 2D, um, row, column, times equals multiplier, and we'll print the original list. So let's run this code. And as you can see, it's now changed the numbers successfully, and we can submit this code. And as you can see, our code's now working. So let's do the maximum now. Given two integers, um, sorry, uh, and subsequent n rows, find the maximal element and print its row number and column number. If there are many maximal elements, report the one with the smaller row number, which is the one we'll just encounter first. Um, yeah. So how do we do this? First, we want to input our list again. And now we want to loop over the list in the same way, more or less. And we want to define a maximum element, first of all. So let's call this max element. It's equal to um, list 2D 0, 0. If you remember before, when you we were trying to find the maximum element in a 1D list, which is just a normal list, we had errors, but when we set this max element initially to zero, because it could be possible that all of the elements were less than zero. Finally, we also want to put the max element row and max element column so we can store the row and column information about the elements. So max element row is equal to zero, max element column is equal to zero. And now we want to loop over every single element in this list 2D. So list 2D row column. And we want to check if this element is greater than our current maximum element. So if this is greater than our max element, then we want to set our max element to this, set our max row to this row, and set our max column to this column. So max element is equal to list 2D row call. Max element row is equal to uh, row. Max element column is equal to column. And finally, we want to print the max elements row and column. So we can simply print max element row, comma, max element column. So if we run this code, now and paste in our input as you can see it gets the correct output as well so now we can submit this code and as you can see from that we've got it working now let's move on to the next challenge so we're given an integer n create a two-dimensional array of size nxn according to the following rules on the main diagonal, print put 0. On the diagonals next to it, put 1. On the next adjacent diagonals, put 2, and so forth. Okay, so we want 
to um, I, I think the best way to do this would be to initialize an empty 2D list with just filled with zeros and then loop over each element for and change it to its correct number. There are better ways, there are faster ways to do it than this, but this will help you understand what a 2D list is the best. So first let's input our size variable, which is the number of um, rows and columns. So is equal to int input. And let's initialize a to be array. So uh, list, sorry, the a to be list is equal to um, zero for j in size of uh, range size or i in range size. And if we print this list, this should this will just return us something that looks like this. So if we run this code and we put in um, five, then it will return this list. And now I want to improve the readability for you guys a little bit. So currently, if we just print our list 2D, it, um, oops, whoopsies, it is in a bunch of rows, which is hard to understand when we're coding. We want it to look something more like this. And we're going to turn to our old friend, the join method. So first we want to join each string in this list, I'm sorry, each list in this list 2D into a string. So we can make a string, um, string list equal to um, space dot join and then uh, list, uh, small, sorry, no, maybe row, for row in list 2D, and we can join this string list together. So, uh, actually, yeah, so we can print, uh, backslash n, which means new line, dot join, and we have string list. If you run this code, uh, Expected string instance integer found. Oh, oops. Um, whoopsies. What have I done? Uh, of course, um, these are currently integers, and we need to convert them back into strings. So what we will do is we will have a uh, String list 2D here will convert every single character in this list 2D into a string. So we can have um, string for um, str number for number in row or row in list 2D. And then we can convert these to we can join these together and then we can print them. Oh. Sorry, I think we're lagging. It's weird. Mm. I'm going to reload my page. We'll be back. And OK, so I've just run this code. And as you can see, it formats it nicely into a square grid, just like we might see here. Now we could make this string code more efficient. It takes up three lines and I think we could do it in one or two, but that's not the main focus of this challenge. So I'll be avoiding it for now. Now we can just edit this list 2D and see our output in a nice square grid. So we want to loop through this list and change all the numbers on the adjacent diagonals to one and on the next adjacent diagonals to two and so forth. So let's copy over our old list for um, row, and in this case, it will just be the range of over the size because both the rows, number of rows and number of columns are the same. And now we want to figure out how far away the number is from the main diagonal. 
because that is that will determine what number it should be. So if the number is on the main diagonal, it means that its x coordinate or its row number, row index is equal, sorry, its row index is equal to its column index. So and as we get farther and farther from the call from the column, it increases by one proportionally. So how do we find how far it is? It's simple. We use the absolute value of the row minus the column. And this is already the output, really. So if we just set the list to D, row, column, to this, as you can see, uh, it prints it correctly. And that's because, OK. So let's imagine this character first, the one at the very top with the indexes of 0 and 0. The absolute value of 0 minus 0 is 0, so it's 0. Now, this next one over here has a row index of 0 and a column index of 1. So it will be 0 minus 1, negative 1, the absolute value of which is 1, and so on for the other characters, thus printing the nice little pattern we have over here. And therefore, we can see this works for other values of size. Like if I do 10, it does the exact same thing, prints this nice little value. Testing the limits, if I do something like 200, it will um, not be look very nice, but it will be able to do the trick. And so we can submit this code. Now, if you're still unsure about this whole 2D list thing, maybe take a minute to slow down, play around with um, all of these things, um, change stuff up, have some fun, and that way you can figure out how 2D lists work better and such. But for now, we'll be moving on to the final question, triangles. Given an integer n, create a two-dimensional array according to the following rules. On the anti-diagonal, which is this line over here, put 1. On the diagonals above it, put 0, and then on the diagonals below it, put 2. So we'll copy and paste the code from here because a lot of it will be similar. We want to use the string code to nicely format our code again, and now we can edit it. As you can see, we have one input again, which is just the size of the square array. And now we need to figure out what to do over here. So um, how do we know if a number is on the anti-diagonal? A number will be on the anti-diagonal if its row number, if it's, sorry, it's, if its row index and its column index add up to the size. If you think about it, let's take this one over here. Its row index is one. Its column index is two. Um, sorry, we, I think we have to actually uh, size minus one because we're using arrays. So its row index is one. Its column index is two. Therefore, 1 plus 2 is 3, which is 4 minus 1. Let's check it for this one. Its row index is 0. Its column index is 3. It's 3 equals to 4 minus 1. So we want to go if um, the row plus the column is equal to size minus 1, then we want to insert a 1 there. So list 2D, row, column equals 1. But how do we know if it's above this? If it's, ab if it's below this, like bottom right of this anti-diagonal, and that will be if its row number plus its column number is simply greater than size minus one. Let's check it for this number. Its row number is two, its column number is two, or two plus two is four, which is greater than four minus one. So therefore this should be two. This one, its row number is three, its column number is two, 3 plus 2 is 5, which is greater than 3, so therefore it should be 1. So therefore, a left row plus column is greater than size minus 1. Then list 2D row column is equal to 2. And you might be asking, why are we not checking if it's below? And the thing is, we already initialized this 2D list to have all zeros. So if the number turns out to be a zero, it's fine, we can just leave it. So if we run this code and we put our input four, as you can see, it puts the correct numbers. If we run it and put something like 10, as you can see, it's still correct. And so 
by submitting this code, we have figured out the correct solution to this problem. So that's all for the 2D lists today. And next time we'll be tackling some much harder 2D list challenges. And um, I hope you're ready for them. See you then.